add value to your business or do you want to just be this administrative person? And often if you look at your talent team and the caliber of talent in your company, they correlate. You could hire the best person for the job if they were in your candidate pool. All these individual employees, one by one by one, together, their voices all come together to articulate the culture of the company. There is this frustration. It has turned into just an incredible impatience. And so I think that that is pushing us over to seeing a more willingness to look at the technology. Hey, hey Mike, do, do you hear that? I, I do notice a slight din. Yeah, there's something there. I, oh, I know what it is. What's that? We're on the floor at HR Tech. Oh, yeah. Again, for another one. Uh, and after that cheesy introduction, I'm going to go jump in a hole. Uh, but instead, I'd rather us just get back to more of the content. So this is Sean Simmerly, uh, your co-host on Hiring on All Cylinders. I'm joined with the wonderful Mike Trigg, our CMO here at Intello. Mike, how's it going? Very good. Excited to be kicking things off at HR Tech here. I know. We're, we're keeping the ball rolling. And sitting with us at this little trio table uh, is Stacia Gar. Stacia is a researcher and thought leader on talent management, leadership, DNI, people analytics, and HR technology. Uh, she's a frequent speaker, writer, with her work being featured in Fortune, Forbes, New York Times, and a whole slew of others. And she also co-founded Red, Re Red Thread Research. That's like a tongue twister, Stacia. A little bit, yeah. Um, that is... That's, that's creative. I like that. Um, and so we're going to dive into a whole bunch of different things here. Uh, and I know announcers love to talk right as we're recording. So if you hear that, that's what's happening. But Stacia, thanks so much for joining and welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. So I guess we'll just kind of get it started with a very broad introduction. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of the work that you do? Yeah, so I'm a co-founder and principal analyst at Red Thread Research, which is an organization that we founded in March of this year, so we just turned six months old. Congratulations. Thank you. And before that, I was the lead analyst at Burson by Deloitte for eight years doing research on talent management, performance management, kind of all the same things that, uh, that I cover now. And uh, before that, at CEB Gartner. So we, we do at Red Thread Research as we do research, as you would expect from the name. And we do um, executive networking groups, which we call kind of hacking HR problems. So I can tell you more about that. Mm. And then um, events and advisory services. Fabulous. Um, yeah, hacking. We, that's research creative. Hacking. Yeah. Yeah. Research yeah. hacking. <laughs> research hacking. So speaking of research, uh, you tweeted recently that you would have some new research on diversity and inclusion, I guess, that you're announcing here at the show. What can you share with us? Yeah, it launched this morning. So it's a new project that really focuses on what is the breadth of diversity and inclusion technology that's available to folks today. So the way that we thought about the different vendors is uh, they could be either DNI focused, which means their sole business is around diversity and inclusion. Uh, they could be what we call DNI feature. So they have a feature that applies to diversity and inclusion, such as Intello has, or they could be DNI friendly, meaning that what they do has a potential positive impact on diversity and inclusion, but it's not a primary part of their business or their marketing. And the research was from the to look at the vendor landscape, or did you talk to buyers as well? What, what was so the phase one of the research was to look at the vendor landscape. So it was a qualitative analysis of pretty much anybody we could find out there, and there's close to 100 vendors in the report. We are wow. now on phase two, so anybody who listens could go and participate in the research. We have a survey that's for buyers as well as for vendors. Um, and so we ask that folks come in and tell us what they want, what they're looking for, what they're offering um, a bit more in terms of uh, what their product direction is. And then we're gonna pull that all together and publish it in Q1 of 2019. Fantastic. Well, you heard it here first, okay. Yeah. Folks, go check that out and, uh, and submit some answers there. What inspired you to embark upon this project in the first place? So a number of years ago, I started research on diversity and inclusion when I was at Burson, and we I asked questions around, you know, what technology are you using? I was asking end users, um, and they said, what are you talking about? Um, and technology? <laughs> technology? <laughs> and they're like, do you mean e-learning on DNI? And I was like, no, not really that. And then some other folks said, well, do you mean technology that makes our, our web-based applications more accessible to people who are differently abled? And I was like, that seems important, but that's not really what I'm going for. Uh, and so I kind of put it in the back of my mind, this was something that was out there, but or that there wasn't anybody there, continued on with the research. Then um, when we launched Red Thread, it was post Me Too and everything that was uh, the implications of that. Um, obviously, we had all these new technologies, natural learning processing, and uh, better AI, uh, sentiment analysis, et cetera. And I said, there has got to be 
something here. So I came back to it and actually posted something on LinkedIn in early March and said, hey, has anybody seen anybody doing this? And the response was overwhelming. And I said, all right, like this has got to turn into uh, a report for us because clearly something's here, but not a lot of people are talking about it. We have seen that as well. In our um, in June, we hosted our recruiting recruiting automation summit, and DNI was a major topic of conversation, really organically. It yeah. came up in the questions, it came up in the discussions. We had roundtables on it, a number of speakers on it. Um, and one of the things that struck me as really interesting is, you know, a lot of companies have set up, obviously, DNI task forces, if you will, in their organizations. But we heard this frustration mm -hmm. expressed from a number of, of folks that they really haven't seen the needle move that much mm -hmm. in terms of the DNI hiring that they're doing and even sourcing that they're doing. In your research, what have you found to be, you know, the, the catalyst for that really changing in a measurable way? So. It's actually funny that you say that. So the title of the report is Diversity and Inclusion Technology, colon, Could This Be the Missing Link? And a big part, the reason we chose that title was because there is this frustration. And then, you know, with all these things, these social movements that we've seen, it has turned into just an incredible An impatience. Yeah. Yes, like we, it's now affecting stock prices, it's ex affecting individual executives, you know, at all these different companies. And so I think that that is pushing us over to seeing a more willingness to look at the technology because technology can enable scalable um, solutions that can touch a wider uh, number of employees versus just a single program where you get them in, you give them some learning, and then you kind of go off. But the technology any employee could potentially access um, and it can actually change our processes and, and uh, practices. So yeah. I think it's a big shift. Where, did, did you see any themes emerge about where in the recruiting funnel, you know, the biggest bottlenecks were in terms of mm -hmm. achieving that result of a more diverse workforce? We didn't look at that specifically as a, as a focus, but kind of thinking about where, where that is. It, there's a lot of technology, a lot of um, investment being made in um, some of the stuff that you all are doing, like the the blind the uh, ca blind candidates, mm -hmm. or excuse me, unbiased. unbiased. Un yeah. mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. <laughs> no worries, it's, it's a mouthful. Yeah. It's like red thread research. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Hey. laughs> Um, but also, I think, in the assessments themselves, right? So so it's one thing to, to not be able to see a candidate's uh, gender or their name or something like that. Um, but then if you get just a, a qualified profile, um, there's often a, step, a next step where you do get that the information about the candidate, but you can't, um, hiring managers still sometimes will say, oh, well, they're not qualified once you start putting them through some sort of assessment. So I'm seeing more assessments that are blind I'm kind of uh, uh, mimicking the blind auditions that, yeah. that we see. So that that's, I think, a bigger a big shift. You just as well. carried another step in the yeah. funnel. Absolutely. And just like that, uh, the pitch fest is about to start going. Uh, and so at 5:28 p.m. here on the first night, um, I might say. Uh, Let's call it there, and with a nice little asterisk that says, um, "Hey, uh, Stacia, maybe come back, and uh, we'll do another one of these." Okay, if I can, I'll be here. Okay, perfect. Thanks um, well, so thanks much so for much. coming by. Yeah, and we'll, uh, we'll see you around soon. Thank you, guys.